Broadcasting live. My name is Yasmin. If you're first time watching in, hello. Thank you for joining us. And today we have an additional new furry friend. Meet uh, the royal corgi. <laughs> I've added him. So he's joining all our friends here. And you know, um, corgis are always linked to the Queen of England because she's got many, many, many corgis. She loves, I think she's got like 12 or 13. I just have one. But anyway, a very, very warm welcome. And I hope you had a fabulous, fabulous weekend. Now, on Saturday, we had Sing Together, which I really hope you're part of, where it was an initiative getting everybody to sing Home by Dick Lee. And Dick Lee led this, of course. It was amazing. It was wonderful. It was so heartwarming to hear people singing home just outside their windows and they're waving their phones and this is making its rounds on the social media so while everybody was singing waving their phones you must hold a phone very tightly right somebody um and an htv block dropped their phones and somebody in the other block recorded it so we're going to show you the video but first let me explain to you um how you see it so down the middle there's this whole row of lights because that's the staircase right so to the left of it you see this tiny little light that's going like <laughs> we've slowed it down so see if you can spot it let's take a look at the video <laughs> can you see can you see oh no Oh no! Okay, so if that was your phone, oh, my heart goes out to you. It's like your phone was literally in flight mode. Pew! Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, maybe it's just time to get a new phone. Always try to look at the bright side of things, right? The phone kamakazi a little bit. So next time you do this, please hold your phone really tightly or put it around, put a lanyard or something. So that's what happened over the weekend. And also some updates on uh, stay home uh, and being safe in Singapore. Now, um, the car parks at the parks and all the gardens now closed okay so if you're going to be needing to exercise remember do it alone not with your whole household and if you need to drive to get to the park then obviously don't go to it that's why they've closed uh, their car park so if it's right next door and it's walkable distance then sure go ahead if not then just exercise if you need to outside if you die die need to do it in your own neighborhood vicinity all right let's get to our Jesse's poll of the day Woo! Our poll of the day is all about breakfast item cereal. So, very curious how this is going to pan out when it comes to eating your cereals in the morning. I know some people don't like it with milk, so that's a different category, okay? So that one we put aside. But when it comes to putting it in your bowl, do you put the cereal in the bowl first and then the milk? Or does the milk go in first, then you chuck, 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 the cereal? Which is it? You can vote now. We've got the numbers on the screen. Check it out, check it out. Ta-da! It's over there. Can you see it? We've uh, upgraded our little show. So you can Facebook us, facebook.com slash class95fm or also on our Instagram stories, which is at class95fm. Vote now, cereal first or milk first and share with us the reason why as well. So personally, I don't like it with milk. I just like to eat it like a snack. But I think if I had to choose, it would be cereal first. Then you slowly add in the milk, like a little bit. Because I hate soggy cereal. I hate it. It's like, ugh. So you add a little bit of it, then it only coats some of the cereal. Then you eat, then you can add more milk and the milk will stay cold as well. So that's personally my choice, but I want to hear from you. Next up, we've got our item of the day. Guess which radio, Class 85 radio DJ this belongs to. Okay, uh, I'm very good with chicken translation. Um, this chicken says, Can you say it again? Uh, he says, Hope you had a good weekend and a start to the work week. Thank you very much. Would you like to go rest now? <laughs> so who does this belong to? Which Class 85 radio DJ? Make a guess. Drop us a line on our WhatsApp, which is uh, 91259500. Or you can also head to our Facebook Live, the comment section, and share. Now also, we have this little segment. Hello from the other side. Doing all your greetings and your messages to friends you can send them over again at the whatsapp which is 91259500 so we're gonna go back on air and then i'll chat with you again okay be right back be right back okay let's see now set ew, ew, ew. Uh, 
Lunch break with Yasmin Chen. Hello, hello. We're broadcasting live on Channel 5 and also simulcast on Me Watch and on Facebook Live. Hello, everybody. You got to listen out for Song of the Hour. Bit of Michael Bublé to qualify for this Friday's spin and win. Good luck. The best. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so we are jazzing up our little show with new segments. And every Monday, there is now Makeup Mondays. So here's the thing. When you stay at home, right, do you feel like you're really lazy? Like you don't want to put on makeup unless you really have to and you're doing a teleconference or a video call with, with clients or something. If not, like, ah, don't need lah. And also dressing up. But here's the thing that I discovered. So I'm really lazy when it comes to makeup. Um, it takes me a very long time. So every day it takes about an hour and a half to do my makeup. Uh-huh. Effort, okay. I don't wake up looking like this at all. So I feel really lazy and I hate hate doing it but after I've put on my makeup I do feel a lot better when I look at myself in the mirror it's like oh hello who's that or even when it comes to clothes so I love staying in my jammies all day long but honestly I don't think that's a good mindset to have on weekdays because when you dress up a little bit even if you're at home and not going anywhere it just makes you feel better and in the mood to be productive about work right so we've got makeup Mondays and um I've invited my good friend Larry Yo. So he's a makeup artist for like 20 years. A lot of experience. He's done many celebrities. He's done a lot of uh, campaigns, photo shoots, magazine covers. So he knows what he's talking about. And today we discover the foundations of putting on foundation. Do you see what I just did there? Uh, uh, uh. Okay, let's take a look at the video. It's Makeup Mondays with Larry Yo. Check it out. Today, we're going to learn about the foundations of applying foundation. So what does foundation do? A foundation, what it does is even out your skin colour. Remember, don't cake up too much that it looks like cement on your face. How do we apply foundation? Foundation can be applied with fingers, a brush, a sponge. But personally, I prefer fingers or using a brush. That way, you can control it and blend across the face much translucent and more real. First step. We're going to take foundation and squeeze it on the back of our hands. I like to use a makeup brush and just pick it up at the back of my hand. And then I'll separate the face into three portions. One, two and three. Starting from the bone structure here and blend it out. We tap it on first and then press upwards. You want to go from more to less. And then the excess on the brush, you can tap it inwards. And more of it, we're going to push it onto the nose area. Upon the upper and lower lip, and it's done. If you have extra redness, what you can do is pick more foundation and just tap upon the areas where it's still redder without applying too much concealer. So the skin still looks real and not too made up. And now my forehead. We're going to push it from here upwards on the forehead. Just by doing that, everything is polished up. If you notice carefully, I don't apply foundation upon my eyelid because this is a moving area. If you put too much foundation upon this area itself, it tends to crease up and your makeup looks a bit patchy. And there it is, done. He makes it look so simple, right? And just for the record, Larry used to actually a much lighter foundation. That's why he looks so fair after that. He used it so that we can see it. If not, it'll be a bit hard to see the, the contrast and the difference. So now you know the foundations of putting on foundation. And thank you to Larry Yo for showing it to us as well. Makeup artist with 20 years of experience. He's got more videos and more tips and tricks every Monday for Makeup Mondays. Uh, by the way, you can uh, check him out on his Instagram as well, which is at Larry Yo. He's always reviewing different products. Uh, you know, if you're a bit of a makeup junkie, he's your go-to guy, okay? So something else that was in the news that made me feel very like, ah, so touched. In Switzerland, you know, the very famous uh, range of mountains called Matterhorn, right? What they've done is they've done this beautiful light installation show, um, putting on um, a country's flag just to say that, hey, we're united with you. And just a few days ago, they put up Singapore's flag and this is how it looks. 
So pretty. Look at that. It's Singapore and Matterhorn. It's like, oh, it's magical. So a big thank you to all our friends in Switzerland. Thank you for the love. I think we're feeling it here in Singapore. And um, here on Class 85, when we do our spin and win, previously we're giving away um, business class tickets and holidays. And Switzerland is one of the top three choices of Singaporeans to go to. I'm, it's true. Switzerland, Italy, and Iceland. Because every time I ask, hey, where are you going to go to? They go, Switzerland! So Switzerland, we love you! Okay, quick check with my screen here. What's going on? I've got uh, Justin Bieber and his latest song. And coming up, I've got some nom nom news for you. If you love Italian food, yes, mamma mia, Italian food, I've got a really good, good promo that uh, it's, I think, really value for money. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, let's check in with our... Jazzy's Poll of the Day! Our Poll of the Day! It's all about breakfast cereal. So which one goes into the bowl first? Is it the cereal that goes into the bowl, then the milk, or is it milk, then cereal? Okay, what are you guys saying? Let's see now, huh? Uh, Rin says, cereal first. Because I want the bowl full of cereal. Then I slowly pour in my milk and I add a bit more when needed. So I think Rin is a very visual person. You like to see that whole lushness of that cereal bowl, huh? huh? Um, Aikyong says, milk first. I almost didn't realize, but once I pour the milk first to find out if there's enough milk for the cereal, other times I'm always cereal first, fruits, nuts, milk last. Oh, okay. So I think it depends on his mood. Uh, Sherman says, cereal first person, definitely. Because I can fill the bowl to the brim with cereal before I pour in the milk. This will ensure the ratio of the cereal to milk is always more. Ah, so that's true. If you pour more of the cereal, then you know how much more milk to pour in. And also you can control how much you eat, right? If you pour a little bit, a little bit, then you might eat more cereal than you mean to. Yeah, good point. I never thought about that. Mm. Joanne says, milk first. When you pour cereal before milk, it's hard to see how much milk you're pouring. So you always end up with too much at the bottom of the bowl. So for a better cereal to milk ratio, pour the milk in first. Ah, that's a good idea as well. Frank Franklin. Hello, Franklin. How are you doing? Thank you for joining us for our show. It says, first the cereal, then the milk. Wait for the cereal to soften, then time to nom nom. What? So Franklin actually likes soggy cereal. I'm like, ugh. When I see soggy cereal, I actually throw it away. I'm like, ugh. So, waste, uh, so wasteful. Huh? Alex says, here's the right way. I say, milk goes in first before the cereal. Uh, you add it in small amounts to keep it from getting soggy and it keeps the milk fresh as well. That's true. If you're a slow eater, you like to chew your food and you like to take your time, then you don't want the milk to go rancid and you want the milk to be nice and cold, right? So vote now. I want to hear from you. Are you cereal first or milk first? And of course, share why. This is how you do it. Log on to our Facebook, which is facebook.com slash class 95 FM. And also on our Instagram stories, it's, uh, should be there. It should be flashing on the screen. Is it on the screen? Okay. If not, ah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> our new little toy. Okay. We're going to come up in just a bit and I've got Num Num News up next. I'll talk to you on air. <laughs> Class 95, Justin Bieber with Intentions. It's Yasmin with you. Coming up, Song of the Hour. Bit of Michael Bublé, the bubbly Bublé, with Haven't Met You Yet. That is the Song of the Hour. Now, if you want to win cash, so $20,000, we give it away on, uh, on Friday, but we still have lots of money. We've got two slices of $5,000 to be won, and one person's also going to walk away with $2,000. So that's easy money. Just qualify first. Listen out for that Michael Bublé song in this hour in Class 85. If you're the first call through, you qualify and you'll be eligible for this Friday's Spin and Win. Good luck! In the meantime... Class 95's Nom Nom News with Yasmin.
All right, let's talk about Italiano, Italian food. Now, award-winning Gatto Pado, which is at Tra Street, is all about serving sustainable seafood. That's the key thing. Uh, the Sicilian way. Now, the focus is on light, refreshing, and healthy Italian food with a focus on natural ingredients and just simple cooking methods. And now they're offering pickups and island-wide delivery from Wednesdays to Sundays, 12 to 9 p.m. So they've got a huge range from appetizers like burrata Tina, tomato soup, uh, cold cuts to pastas, risottos uh, like tagle tale with Normandy blue lobster in cognac sauce and coriander. Uh, coriander pe- pesto that sounds really good right as well as busiate pasta with wagyu beef ragu and bone marrow butter oh it sounds so indulgent I'm so hungry right now uh, to mains like panini with braised wagyu short ribs it's going to just melt in your mouth desserts like tiramisu and modica dark lava cake with dolce de leche so gato pado is best known for the really fresh seafood um, two things that you need to order a must have would be the salt crusted uh, baked fish of the day as well as their seafood stew which i've had before and that is really delicious the, the, the flavors just explode in your mouth so they've reduced the prices for some of the dishes by more than 50 percent mm-hmm. and they're also offering three course stay at home menus at 45 dollars net per person with a minimum order uh, for two persons now you get a starter a main and a tiramisu for dessert and they're going to be offering a free burrata in there as well now this is really worth it to consider especially for the weekend or if you want to indulge it's called the weekend brunch menu, but it's available during the weekdays as well. So what do you have? You have, so it's priced at $150, but it's so much food, you can easily eat for four persons or even more if you're small eaters. Huh? So you've got first a burrata with some mixed cold cuts. Then you've got a yellow fin tuna salad. Then you have a Wagyu beef lasagna. Then you've got a whole big baked fish, like a whole fish, which you know is always very expensive, right? Then you have half a roasted chicken. And then you also have mushroom risotto. And then you also have tiramisu. Now you know, I understand what I'm trying to say by this is really value for money. 150 bucks for the weekend brunch menu. It really literally feeds for very comfortably. Now all prices are net and it's free delivery island wide with a minimum order of just $50 for all Orders below $50 is a flat $10 fee. You can order right now at uh, gatopardo.com.sg slash order. So it's G-A-T-T-O-P-A-R-D-O dot com dot S-G slash order. Class 95. Oh, that made me so hungry. So hungry. Just talking about it. Mm, mm. Okay, let's talk about more food. So on Class 85, we have our food awards. It's called Class 85's Foodies Choice. And it's nominated and voted by our listeners. We don't have a panel of judges. I don't get to decide. And I thought I'll share with you the winners. Today, this is the winner for Ma La Xiang Guo, which is Ma La Stir Fry. You know, if you've never had it before, uh, it's kind of like Yong Tao Fu. You pick all the ingredients and then they stir fry it with Ma La Sauce, which is numbing and fiery. It's very delicious. And this is the winning stall for Ma La Xiang Guo. Check it out. Hello, welcome to People's Park Complex. And this is the place where we're going to find best mala xiang guo as recommended and voted by you. Of course, this is for Classified Foodies Choice, our very first food awards. So let's go find this doll. Here it is, Ru Ru Hong Mala Xiang Guo. I am salivating already. Let's go find the box. Hello, Wow, <laughs> Well, 
了。OK， 可以，可以，可以，可以，可以。OK。So here's slightly different. You don't take the ingredients. You let somebody take it for you. 我要吃导播，我喜欢这个。And here we have a nice big bowl of mala xiang guo. So a good mala xiang guo is going to have good flavor. It's going to be spicy and it's going to be numbing as well and fragrant. Okay, it passed the fragrance test. It's quite spicy and it's good. 好，先先恭喜你们的观众选择的，你的是最好吃的麻辣香锅在新加坡。好好，谢谢，谢谢。The best mix of music, Class 95. Ta-da! Yes, that is the winning stall for best mala xiang guo. And stop laughing at my Mandarin, okay? I know you're laughing at my Mandarin. It gets better throughout the seasons because I don't think in Mandarin. I think in English, right? So then I got to translate it and then I got to move the grammar all around. So it's very stressful for me, okay? And I don't practice Mandarin at all. So stop laughing at my Mandarin. <laughs> anyway, every day we're going to showcase another winning stall for a specific local dish. And that's our Class 5's Foodie's Choice. Right now, I want to take the opportunity to say hello to a couple of friends to Ivy and Gwen who are tuning in and they hate it when I do this. They really hate it. They're like, ugh! So I'm going to do it anyway. Thanks for tuning in. For you. <laughs> okay, let's get back to uh, our little uh, hello greeting segment. Hello from the other side. Hello. Hello. Okay, who's saying what? Let's see now from Ling. Hello, Ling. I hope you're having a really good Monday. It says, my husband loves watching you on screen. Oh, hello. Hello, Ling's hubby. Thanks for tuning in. You rock. It says, we are watching you now. It would be great to say hello. Ah, hello, hello, hello. Hey, but Ling, you didn't tell me your hubby's name. So I'm just going to call him Ling's hubby. <laughs> uh, Angelina. Hey, Angelina. Hey, girl. It says, please send love and hugs. Okay, love. Love, love, love and hugs. That's the radio hug. Okay. To my hubby who is working overseas. Uh, to From his family, Angelina and Benjamin. Oh no, separated by distance because of this whole COVID-19. I've got a friend whose hubby is also overseas and uh, she was going to join him in Indonesia but they haven't seen each other for I think two months already. But you know what? Look on the positive side. At least there's still video conferencing and high-speed internet, right? I, th- I keep saying this. If this would happen like in the early 2000s when we still had dial-up modems, <gasps> no teleconferencing or video conferencing even, and those uh, phone calls overseas, so expensive. So little things that we got to be grateful for today. I want to say hi to Elvin Lowe who says, send my love to my daughters Celeste and Rachel who are sitting in front of the telly watching Class 95 Live. Hi, girls! Thank you so much for that. From the other side. <laughs> Okie dokie, so now let's get back to our item of the day. <laughs> Who do you think this item belongs to? Which Class 85 DJ? Um, Michael Chan says, Vernon's cheeky to attract his baby. I, I like the logic, but the, technically Vernon's baby doesn't come into the studio, so... Mm, mm, yeah. Um, Linda Veni Ida Xiaoping. It says, hello. It says, the little toy chicken belongs to Justin because it sounds like the toy can make him wake up. <laughs> I know some people think it's very irritating. Um, Izzy, Dylan, Jamie, and Nat. And it says, I bet the chicken's yours because chicken translation is true. I'm very well versed in chicken language. <laughs> yes, I know. Okay. Okay, so Chicky says that uh, Monday has been a very rainy day and he's feeling a bit down. Really? How come? Why? I love rainy days. Anyway, the answer to this is this belongs to me. <laughs> if you guessed me, then you're correct. Everybody else, wrong. So this was actually some uh, PR gift that he sent over. A lot of us have it, but I'm the only one who kept it because I really like him. I think it's hilarious. And there's so many videos out there with these chickens singing songs. They changed the, the, the key, obviously, because <laughs> this chicken is one key only. And I love Chiki, so Chiki keeps me company. And also because I'm well-versed in chickeny, the language of chickens. So bounce to me! Okay, we're going to get back. Uh, right now, we're playing Ed Sheeran's with Perfect. And I've got some wonderful trivia about Ed Sheeran. There's two guys in his life that has greatly influenced what Ed Sheeran does today. And we have to be grateful for these two men. So I'll tell you more in just a bit. But let's get back to our... Jazzy's Poll of the Day! Our Poll of the Day.
today is all about breakfast cereals. If you're a breakfast cereal person, then this is for you. Which one do you put in your bowl first? Do you put the cereal in first or is it the milk first? Ooh. Let's see now. Uh, Steffi says, I put cereal first. Team cereal because you know how much milk to pour in sufficiently to cover the cereal. <gasps> you want to cover the cereal? Then everything gets really like mushy in it. Okay. Merv says, team milk first. Then I sprinkle the conflicts as I eat. Like you, I don't like it soggy. Hey, hey, we same, same team. Um, this one from Alish who says... Well, cereal first because you decide how much cereal you want to eat first. Then you pour in the milk after. So this process is reversible in a sense because you can reduce the amount of cereal as compared to the milk if you just pour it in first. That's true. If you put in a certain amount of milk, then you must have that milk to cereal ratio, right? Then what if you eat more than you need to? <gasps> Calories! Whereas you put in the cereal first, then you know how much you're eating, like one bowl, two bowls, one handful, two handfuls, then you add in the milk. You guys get a point. I never thought about it that way. I think I might change the way I eat this. Um, Christine says, team cereal first so the milk will flow through the cereal. I feel like this is some Tai Chi thing going on. Um, if milk first, then you colourful pops will just be floating. I don't know what that means, but thank you for sharing. So keep on voting and by the end of the show, we will have the results. Is it team cereal first that wins or team milk first that wins? Okay, we're going to go on air now. I'm going to share with you that trivia about Ed Sheeran. Talk to you on air. I love the song Ed Sheeran with Perfect. Right here on Class 95. So there's two massive Ed Sheeran songs that are very romantic. I mean, Shape of You is not like the romance, romance type, right? There was uh, Thinking Out Loud and this song, Perfect. And which one does Ed Sheeran think is better? I think the song Perfect is actually better than Thinking Out Loud. I think uh, that there was always a scare that Thinking Out Loud would define me and define my career. So I, um, I wrote a lot of songs trying to beat it. And I think I, I, think I had beaten it. Right, I think it's a huge song that a lot of people play for weddings when you want to like, eh, 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 I like you, you know, that also is the song to go to. And I was just saying there's two men in Ed Sheeran's life that we got to thank because it's shaped how he's done his music. Um, one of them is this guy. It's like, I want to do that. I want to learn that song. Probably the first 50 songs I wrote were in this room. I used to sit by the wall with like a little lamp, play um, Eric Clapton riffs. Right, so the first one is Eric Clapton. It's because of Eric Clapton. The very first song he heard was uh, Eric Clapton playing Layla on the guitar. And after hearing that, he decided to pick up the guitar and then he started to learn how to play the guitar. And the second guy that really influenced Ed Sheeran to start writing his own music is surprisingly... Damien Rice. I started writing songs after I got into Damien Rice. I literally bought everything he ever released. And then I had all the bootleg records you can get from eBay as well, which have songs that you couldn't find anywhere else. They were just fan recordings. I was super fan. So he was a super fan of Damien Rice. And we wondered, who who is Damien Rice? He's the guy that gave us this song. Remember it was a huge song? That's Damien Rice. So Eric Clapton and Damien Rice really shaped Ed Sheeran to become the man, the singer, songwriter that he is today. It's Yasmin with you still to come. Song of the hour. Bit of Michael Bublé. Haven't met you yet is the song of the hour. If you want to qualify for Spin and Win this Friday, call me when you hear it. I'll be looking for my very, very first caller. Music flows in the meantime. The Black Eyed Peas with Where Is The Love? Featuring Justin Timberlake right here on The Best Makes of Music. It's Class 95. Okay, we've got a little bit more time left. And let's wrap up our... It's Yassi's Poll of the Day. Woo! So it's breakfast cereals, milk first or uh, cereal first. So Jen Huan says, team cereal first, then add milk. Why? Prevent cereal from floating on the milk. That way I have more cereal in the bowl. Mm. Okay, Linda says, team milk first because I can just drink the extra milk without the cereal. That is true. How about this? You have it separately. So you eat the cereal. Then you drink a bit of milk. Then you always will get that ratio right. And you won't eat more than you need to. And it will never be soggy. It will always be crunchy with milk. And the milk will always be cold. 
Mm, idea, idea. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so let's have the results. Drum roll, please. Wow. This is an over this is overwhelming. I'm surprised. Okay. So team cereal first have won. 90% of the votes. That is insane. So 90% of class 95 listeners and viewers prefer to have cereal first when it comes to your breakfast cereal. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll catch you again tomorrow. Same time, same place, 1 p.m. right here on Channel 5. Have a great day ahead. Bye. Send you love. Love. This program is available on demand for free on Me Watch. Hello, Singapore. How's everyone doing? All staying at home and trying your best to fight COVID nineteen.